Now, when the Volkswagen T-Cross was first introduced last year, there was a lot of hype following it. What's going on guys? Roy Robles here from zigwheels.ph and today we'll be taking a look at what a basic standard crossover SUV has in store for all you guys out there. This is the Volkswagen T-Cross SE. Let's start with the front end of the Volkswagen T-Cross, the top of the line SE. You've got full LED headlamps, you've got DRLs right here, and you've got fog lamps. These fog lamps are actually directional fog lamps. What that does is that illuminates the corner you're turning yourself into, making things a lot safe for you, giving you a lot better visibility. Speaking of visibility, I love these projector headlamps. They really look aftermarket, they look cool, and it gives the overall look of the Volkswagen T-Cross this futuristic feel. Now, futuristic, modern, that's not something that you'd usually say for a Volkswagen in particular, but this front end here is the future of design when it comes to Volkswagen's cars. In fact, that badge right up there, the Volkswagen badge has a new typography, a new font, and I like the overall look. Now, compared to most of the competition in the market today that gives you these futuristic angular looks, Volkswagen is proud to give you this boxy, squarish kind of design. I like the design on the hood there and gives it a more purposeful, muscular appeal. Harnessing my inner Doug DeMiro, a few quirks and features that we see on the Volkswagen here is that this honeycomb grille right here, as you can see, it doesn't really have any holes there or any air vents, except for these two right here on the right side. The reason behind that is that it doesn't really need that. Would you really want to take home a Volkswagen T-Cross or a crossover SUV that has holes just here? Of course, you have to create a sense of symmetry. And I appreciate that Volkswagen understood that and gave us this nice chrome grille. Onto the side of the Volkswagen T-Cross, as you can see, this is definitely a crossover SUV. You know why? You know why, it just got that black plastic cladding all around it. But it doesn't go over the top of the black plastic cladding at all. It just accentuates the design overall and gives you that purpose that this is a crossover SUV. Now compared to the entry level S model, the SE has larger 17 inch alloy wheels. Now the biggest change here on the exterior has got to be the panoramic sunroof. Off to what I think is the piece, the resistance on the Volkswagen T-Cross. You got this huge black bar in the rear that kind of simulates a light bar, but actually no, you, this part right here doesn't actually light up. But you do get this nice LED tail lamps here on the sides, and this creates a sort of sense of symmetry to the overall look, and I really like it. You got this black out spoiler here, as well as a shark spin antenna. Now on the bottom, you got your Fa rear diffuser. I say fa because this is definitely just a plastic trim there that completes the overall look. Now, if there is one sin that this one commits, then you got these ones right here. What are these? You don't have any holes right there for the dual exhaust ports, but those are not dual exhaust ports at all. It again just creates a sense of symmetry to the overall look. I do wish that those were twin exhausts, but they definitely are not because this only has a 1.5 liter engine and you don't need that. <laughs> you definitely don't need that. But again, it completes the overall look. You don't even see the exhaust ports anywhere. You don't see it, nope. Now, of course, you get a crossover SUV for the practicality. And this is definitely one practical crossover SUV. Okay. Opening up the hatch, you've got a lot of space inside for all your stuff. It's wide and nice. It's not narrow at all. It doesn't sacrifice the functionality for the looks. And it's easy to pick up your stuff in. It's definitely this low loading height here, giving you access to all this stuff inside. If, if you need more space for your longer items, you can just definitely fold the rear seats, 60-40 split, no problems. They don't fold flat, but that's fine because this is definitely just a budget crossover SUV. And one thing I do appreciate about a T-Cross is Volkswagen's attention to detail. Now you have this tonneau cover, a lot of crossover SUVs do have that tonneau cover, but aren't you, aren't you annoyed with these strings whenever they just flop around whenever you put the tonneau cover down? But what Volkswagen did is that they actually put weights right here so that you don't have to worry about them flopping around when you're driving here right there. They put it and tuck it right there, no problems. Bravo. Let's take a look at the inside and see what's what. 
All right, so inside the Volkswagen T-Cross SE, the first thing that's gonna jump right at you is this color palette right here on the dashboard. Actually on the SE, this dashboard right here, this the middle of the dashboard, that color, actually will match the exterior that you're getting. So if you get the Romance red color, which, does, which is this one, you'll have this red interior. If you get the orange one, you'll get the orange, and so forth and so on. What's interesting right here as well is this nice gradient pattern right here on the middle of the dashboard. Kind of looks like Ben Day dots, and I like it, definitely like it. Now the steering wheel is D-shaped right here. You have a flat bottom steering wheel. It's not leather wrapped or leather material wrapped. It's only made of polyurethane with a piano black accent right here in the middle. Another point of interest is this 9.2 inch touchscreen infotainment system right here, which does have Apple CarPlay. In fact, it does have wireless Apple CarPlay, but sadly no Android Auto. Another detail that's different between the SE and the S model is this digital gauge cluster. You, get, you can get all the information that you need out of this. And the center stack right here has the same red accents and it would piano black in the middle. One thing I find iffy are these blank buttons right here, but at least you've got this automatic start stop. Personally, I'm not a fan of that because once you have that activated in our traffic or heavy traffic riddle streets, it's gonna be quite obtrusive. Plus, if that's activated, the air conditioning will shut down, just blast a swath of warm air, and that's definitely not for me. Speaking of AC, you've got your manual dials right here. No automatic climate control for this baby, but you've got this really deep cubby hole right there so you can actually fit your larger than average phones. But one thing that I appreciate though about the interior is the inclusion of a USB-C port. You've got your start stop engine right next to the shifter. The shifter's nice, although the sh on the top of the shifter, is still swat in this piano black material and one thing about the interior though is that the interior lighting is definitely uh, above average than most compact crossover suvs so you won't probably see it right now because it's daytime it's really bright out but inside these door handles you got a small led light as well as on the footwells right here for the front passengers which i really appreciate now for the signature feature of the se trim you've got your panoramic sunroof. Overall, the interior amenities here are great, but one thing that I don't like here is that these seats, well, these seats are actually kind of nice, kind of look kind of steampunk in a way with this white theme with dark accents in the middle, but the stitching, the stitchings are red, which mimics or mirrors the outside color. It's nice, but it's so stiff. I could definitely won't be, maybe it needs a little breaking in, but as of the moment, this could probably be good for city driving, but on long drives, this might pose as a problem. All right, so that's everything about the front end. Let's check out the back. They essentially will be enjoying a lot of toys in the back, especially this panoramic sunroof, which reaches all the way here. These seats are actually more upright than I wanted them to be. Now you do get map pockets right here, rear air vents, which is always appreciated. You also have, again, the USB Type-C and the Type-A. I can definitely fit three of myself in the back. I'm five foot ten and a half right now, five foot eleven with shoes. Six footer if you've got platform shoes, but I could probably squeeze three of myself right here. Again, no dramas in the back, great visibility, and the, you can definitely enjoy the sights and sounds while we're traveling. All right, cool. So, yep, yeah, we'll definitely get, take this out for a drive and see how this goes. All right, so now we are behind the wheel of the Volkswagen T-Cross SE. Now under the hood, you'd find a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine. It makes 111 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque. Now by the sounds of it, it doesn't sound like a lot on paper. And in real life, it actually isn't a lot as well. Acceleration's definitely lacking in my, my book especially during stop and go traffic and stoplight acceleration is not going to be its forte. But once it does get going though, it's great. Once you're out on the highway cruising, it can keep pace. Just don't expect a lot of acceleration boost from this baby. So we'll do a quick acceleration test on D from the six-speed automatic transmission. Let's go. Yeah, nothing there. But it does have an S mode and it increases. Uh, 
the noise. No, just not the noise, but it increases the throttle response right there. So it actually gets a little bit more sprightly, but just by this much. So for suspension, you've got a, with a typical McPherson struts up front and a torsion rear bar suspension there. And it does a great job with actually absorbing all the bumps on the road. Although steering is a little bit numb, I've got to say. If you want to have the comfort of driving, I guess that is a one of the drawbacks that you'll be getting. But I'd say it has it definitely has a nice balance to it. All right, so NBH levels on the Volkswagen T-Cross is kind of great. It's exceptional, actually. Now, the only noise that you'll be hearing is, of course, from those larger trucks out there or smaller motorcycles or tricycles but overall in the city and sound insulation is great and you definitely feel less of the potholes or road imperfections even though you've got a small wheelbase on this crossover suv now we're caught in a little bit of traffic here and that's definitely the last thing you want especially these days with skyrocketing gas prices but thankfully the volkswagen t-cross and surprisingly does have great fuel economy don't take my word for it guys it's definitely one of the better crossover suvs that i've seen out there in terms of fuel economy now it might not be the fastest it might not be the most sprightly or the peppiest uh, during acceleration but it can definitely hold its own whenever you want to rely on it for fuel economy i was driving it around in the city similar traffic as this and i was able to get nine to ten kilometers per liter in the city considering the amount of savings that you'd be getting out of uh, from the fuel pumps in this car in this crossover suv that's that's exceptional now out on the highway once you get up to speed you can actually reach 15 kilometers per liter on the highway it's almost the same level of fuel economy that i get out of a crossover or a crossover hybrid it's amazing Safety features include six airbags. You also get anti-lock brakes with electronic brake force distribution. This also has hill start assist, and you also have tire pressure monitor systems, isofix anchors. You also have backup sensors, and one thing that the SE has over the S that it also has a backup camera. One thing that I just noticed about the touchscreen here is that it can actually feel your hands once it goes near to the touchscreen. They have some sort of sensor to know that if your hand is next to it. See? Oh. Pricing for the top of the line Volkswagen T-Cross starts at 1,250,000 pesos. Now at 1,250,000 pesos, it might be going a little bit too close towards the uh, more powerful uh, SUVs with a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, which this does not have, by the way. But think about what you're getting. You are getting a Volkswagen, a Volkswagen, a European car, German engineering, without having to wonder or worry about those newer brands. I know, you know I love those newer brands with a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. I definitely love them. They're definitely fun to drive, but I know that there are some people who still are a little bit apprehensive with trying to make those purchases. But if you want to be different, you know, not just going for the usual Japanese or American SUVs. If you want that prestige, if you want the simpleness of having a Volkswagen, this just definitely just might be up your alley. You definitely won't be regretting getting a Volkswagen T-Cross, especially in the SE trim with all the packages, all the extra plus packages you'll be getting above the S model. Springing for, for a little bit more for all these feature amenities and this nice red dash and the seats, the leather seats. It's definitely worth it in my book, I think. So there you have it, folks. It's the Volkswagen T-Cross SE. It's not the perfect crossover SUV, but nothing really is. So here are the three things I don't like and I love about this SUV. Let's start with the negatives. First with the acceleration. I wish it had a little bit more pep in its step and was a little bit more quicker off the line. And again, we're talking about a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine, and I would have wished it had a little bit more. Second is the lack of Android Auto. Now, not every one of us are Apple fans, and I wish it added some sort of Android Auto into the mix. I know it now has wireless Apple CarPlay, but I wish they could have used that to put instead some sort of Android Auto for us fans. And I know there's some sort of mirror link there or buy to car life, but this just really doesn't cut it for us. Third are those seats. 
Those seats really look good, but they're really hard and stiff. I mean, for city driving, I'm sure that they're perfectly fine, but I like the way they're contoured, but the, when you sit on them, they're definitely not soft and they're a bit on the stiff side. I wish it could have been a little bit more softer. Now for the positives. First of all, the Volkswagen T-Cross has excellent fuel economy. Now for a crossover SUV, I'd say that nine or 10, or even 11 kilometers per liter in the city is just bonkers crazy. And out on the highway, 15 to 16, forget about it. It might not be the fastest out there, but it's sure gonna be the one to reach the farthest. Second of all is the styling. Now I know that a lot of people like their crossover SUVs to be more macho looking, to be more athletic and even futuristic, but Volkswagen proves that you can definitely go far with a simple, clean and nice design. Third is the interior design. I love those seats. They might not be the most comfortable or the softest, but at least they look great. That steampunk design, the combination of dark and white colors, now that red accent stitching on the seats as well as on the dash, that mimics the exterior color of this romance red is definitely a head turner. Plus, if you get the other color variants of the SE model, you'll see that those stitches and the front dash actually has the same color as those as well. So you would be getting a great amount of customization with this car. So what do you think of the Volkswagen T-Cross SE? Drop us a comment in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification icon so you won't miss any of our videos. We've got a lot of videos coming up for you guys. It's crazy and I hope you enjoy all of them. This is Roy Robles from Zigwheels.ph. I'll see you guys next time.